Thanks to Hotjar for sponsoring this video. See the description below for your referral link. Hello friends, welcome to another video here at Relab Academy with me, Alvin. I wanted to talk to you specifically today about user research, but using Hotjar. So it's one of the things that we use a lot here in Relab. The reason why is because uh, it's so easy to use. When I say it's easy to use, it means it's easy to set up, it's accessible. You don't need too much things other than access to the actual website that you wanted to test or you wanted to review. Um, and I guess the, the, the difference with doing other types of user research is that you can do this almost all by yourself. You don't need too much organization around it and, and uh, pre-work in order to do this. So I wanted to talk to you about how we use Hotjar when we try and improve certain things in a website. Um, we've been using it for a while, and I'll just show you a free version of it because you can try this for free. Uh, and we do have a referral code as well, um, so we'll just drop that into our description down below and you can try it for free. Uh, but it's gonna give you a lot of value when you use this before you start designing or redesigning a website, or even just trying to get some insights on how your users interact with your website. Um, first of all, let's jump into my computer here and we'll see what Hotjar is all about. So hotjar.com, um, here they say understand how users are really experiencing your site without drowning in numbers. Uh, it's very fast to use as well but as soon as you get into their features you'll get a really quick snapshot on how people interact with your website. Um, and I just wanted to go into their about page real quick. So we'll go here. Um, I wanted to skip to this section right here when they say what we do. Uh, so we help better, we help you better understand user behavior so you can make the right changes, improve UX, and grow conversions. And that is right exactly what they do and how they help us at least in Relab so far. So we use Hotjar with any new clients. So sometimes even before, even when we are just starting the engagement, we uh, we would use Hotjar just to try and understand how users are interacting with the potential lead or the potential client's website uh, to give us insight on being able to, uh, you know, understand what type of things does users do and be able to inform the clients that hey guys this is actually what's happening and based on this we have a few educated assumptions rather than coming in blank with you know just your gut feel all right and in terms of setting up hotjar itself you can just google how to set up hotjar but they'll that will take you to one of these pages so how to install your hotjar tracking code um, you don't need to be super technically savvy to do this. Uh, it's actually quite easy and straightforward and they have installation guides for different platforms here, whether it's uh, Joomla, Magento, Shopify, Webflow, and so on and so forth, WordPress. Um, and there are just instructions here. So I won't get into too much of that. I'll let you uh, read and research that. And there are so many different articles out there that will teach you on how to uh, set up your tracking code in Hotjar. If you're familiar with uh, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager and stuff like like that stuff like this would be very easy for you to do as well um, now to show you an example uh, so here and as you know if you've been following us it's very hard for us to talk about client projects so we won't get into client projects but we'll talk about our own internal projects which is uh, real life goods is one of the example here so what it is is um, it's just a little initiative that we did here in Relab uh, back in like at the end of 2020. It's basically uh, an online shop uh, that sells products um, with a concept around uh, resilience, self-care, um, as well as you know just gratitude in general. So have a look at that if you're interested. But we'll use this as an example with uh, embedded uh, hot jar tracking code. We've used just a basic free one so you'll get an idea of what you get when it's just a free uh, product which you know you could sign up for a free one and you can get so much out of it already. Um, and so uh, yeah we'll use this website. I'll come back to this in a second. Um, what I wanted to show you now is the Hotjar uh, dashboard, which looks like this. Now these are uh, data from reallabgoods.com. 
there are a couple of key features in Hotjar. Uh, the first one being heat maps, which is what they're really known for. Number two is user recordings. Number three is incoming uh, feedback or incoming surveys. Um, the, the main ones that we use a lot is heat maps and recordings. The reason why it's so powerful is in addition to understanding any available user data that you may have access to, um, having heat maps and recordings just gives you an extra edge on understanding what the users do and how they behave in the website. And when you pair that with your analysis on Google Analytics or any type of other analytics that you work with, or when you work when you work with larger organizations, oftentimes they even have more data for you to work with. But the the more the data you have, as long as you know how to use the data, then the more the better it is for you as an experienced designer, a service designer, or a product designer. So, in real life goods, though, let's just go to uh, the heat maps, and I'll just give you a quick tour on what they are like. Uh, we have set a few pages here, but the we have stopped the recording. I'll just go to collection pages. Now, as we're doing this, what I like to do is write notes. I like to write notes on some of the thoughts that I may have. And how do I write notes? If you've seen some of our previous videos, I like to use uh, Mural just because it's accessible with the, for the rest of the the team that I have uh, here in Relab, and then we can just share it and collaborate. But by all means, you can use Notion, you can use um, even just spreadsheets or Excel or Google spreadsheets. It, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. But what I like to do is um, list down things that I think are positive, uh, negative, and, as, and neutral. So I'll give you an example without having to go into too much detail. Here's a page that we're seeing in the collection page. So I might just change product detail page to product pages, which covers collection and detail. All right. Now that I've got that, uh, we'll go back to Hotjar over here on my left hand side of the screen. What we're seeing here is the collection page. And as you can see, there are some click hit heat maps here. You could set to uh, you could set to see click heat maps, move heat maps that looks like this. Um, so that shows how the mouse or the cursor moves around um, or scroll heat maps. So when it's red, that means 100% of users reach this point, obviously, because it's the top of the fold. Uh, and then you get an idea on when users drop off at what point of the page. Um, so click is one thing that I like to look at. When I see this, uh, I go, okay, like 30% of the clicks in this page goes to this navigation bar, sorry, this navigation uh, icon right here, which is referring to this one, which means people tend to want to navigate. And then as a designer, what, I, what I'm doing in my head is trying to validate whether or not we need to open up this menu a little bit and make it available already in this desktop. So that allows us a, a click less for the user. So one of the things that I'd like to write here in my notes on the left hand side is, um, all right, just give me one second is um, users require two clicks to get to main menu. That's a negative to me because it just adds a little bit more friction when you're making them do more for to get to where they want to go. Um, so that's an example. And then I can see nine clicks happening here, which is like about 20% of the clicks in this page happening on this section right here, which means people are interested to read uh, people are interested to read the story behind this campaign. So I think it's probably a positive that it's up there, but I wonder if we can do more. But for now, I'll just write, uh, users seem to engage with the collection story or the campaign story. Campaign story, right. Um, 
so on and so forth. So you can do this uh, on, you could have a look at the mobile as well. So what we were seeing here is the desktop. For some reason, this didn't record the tablet, but that's okay. Uh, so you can see consistent uh, activities happening on the mobile as well, that people tap the menu, which means the menu is actually quite important here, uh, that it needs to be accessible, needs to be as easy as possible for the users. Um, and let's see, people are clicking this feedback thing, uh, which I'll get into a little bit later, so on and so forth. So uh, that's what heat map is generally. Um, Obviously, if we get into the details of things, I'll be writing more notes than what I have here, uh, but you'll get an idea of what I would do if I was just analyzing the heat maps and the scroll maps, uh, uh, the scroll heat maps, I mean, and also while doing that in conjunction with that, writing some notes. Now I'll get to the next feature, which is recording. If you're familiar with Hotjar, you would already know this, but this is one of the mind blowing things that they have. Uh, I always show this to clients or people who might not know it, but it blows their mind because it, it sounds scary, but it is pretty cool at the same time. So this is where Hotjar can track user behaviors and record them online, um, just looking at their activities and clicks. So I'll show you a couple of examples. I've um, marked a couple of favorites here, uh, which you can do using this star symbol and just click them. You can also filter them based on the duration. So, uh, just let me load. Oh no, my computer is struggling. Okay, I'll let that load. You could, you could filter it based on the duration. So that's just two seconds. So the relevance is very low and it's not worth for us to watch that oftentimes, but I'll, I like to filter it based on the uh, longest duration. But you gotta be careful as well, because sometimes when you don't block some IP addresses, like that one's 95 minutes, that's probably one of my team members doing some admin work in there. But I like to scroll down and have a look at the other uh, sessions. You can also uh, filter the devices. So that shows desktop. You could also filter mobile in here. Anyway, uh, but there are some some of these sorting tools that you could play around with. There's even um, date. Uh, you can even like tick and untick some of these to have a look to to narrow down your your searches. But I'll give you a couple of examples of uh, recordings that uh, that will give you an idea of what it is. So I'll pick one that I've already favorited. And I'll just play that for you real quick. So what I would usually do is, sorry, the internet is just loading. So what I would usually do is analyze the heat maps first and then make some notes. And in addition to that, I would analyze the user recordings, which is this. You can set the speed to 0.5, 1, which is like what it actually was, 2, 2 times speed, or even 4. Uh, so I like to do 4 because like once I get to, I get the hang of this, so for me to be able to analyze 10, 20 different videos of recordings, I just go 4 times speed because it's so much easier for me to go through it in a shorter period of time. But as I do this, I can tag, uh, I can create some actions, I can view some action notes, um, and I'll just speed this up. That's two times, four times. You'll have some markers here on when the activities or the events happen. So as you can see here, guys, this is like a real user navigating through the website. And as a designer or as the owner of the website, I could really try and understand or even guess what the user is trying to do, but it will give me some idea of, okay, like these are the type of things that people are clicking. Um, these are the type of uh, things that th this user was trying to find, but they're struggling, or they've been scrolling up and down too much uh, between one image to the other, between one information to the other, but it does give you a lot of insights. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of these type of recordings uh, and 
as I'm doing this or as I'm watching this, if I feel like there's something that is quite important to note, I might just tap um, pause and I can just add on more to my notes here that, you know, uh, I don't know, let's just say users seem to appreciate the product images. But in relevance to that note still, uh, I might say, however, users are, are not realizing uh, the secondary image section as they are far down the page. So I can make notes like that for myself or to share with my team members. So that was user recording. Uh, there's a whole bunch, there's a whole bunch of them. So I'll, I'll just stop there. Um, the next thing that I'd like to show you is uh, incoming feedback. So I've just got one example here, but we've taken down R1. Um, essentially what it is, is um, it allows users to give you a real time feedback. So I think Hotjar would have one of those uh, in their page. Just, you know, so it's one of these things here. So I could just, you know, quickly say, how do I feel about this page? I could go love, like, and so on and so forth. So I could go like, and then type in a comment here whatever it is so that's what incoming feedback is uh, we don't use it that much but it when when we use it a comment like this might come in so if someone says like the products but the shopping experience can be better smiley face so in there uh, what I'm thinking as the designer is okay uh, what does shopping experience mean what the shopping experience can be better mean so I could like just add that to my notes again so it's just uh, another layer of uh, feedback or user feedback that you can get on top of everything else that you might have been doing already. The last thing is surveys, which is something that we don't use a lot as well, but you can ask questions and it'll look like this at the bottom of your browser. Uh, so for example, with this, Hajar is asking, is there anything preventing you from signing up to this point? So you could, when you create a a landing page or like something that you just wanted to test, uh, you could create surveys and try to get people to hopefully um, respond to that survey on that page itself, on that page or the whole website. So it's up to you, you can set that up. Uh, essentially, those are the four main points um, that we've got. Uh, but like I said earlier, in Relay, we use heat maps quite religiously and recordings. Those are like the two main things that I see is such a great value. And oftentimes what we do is in heat maps, uh, again, just to give you an example, if this was a product page, to present this to a client, we would just download a JPEG. Uh, you can also download the data, which are like the number of clicks and the percentages and all of that as in a CSV format, depending on how you wanted to present this or feed this into another system. But what we do is we would like download the image, read the data, compile it into a user uh, research report, and then present it to a client. And oftentimes it will mind, it will, it will blow their minds really. Um, and so that's the main thing that I wanted to cover in this video. Um, if you have any questions around uh, how else could we use this or specific to your situation or your project, please reach out, write down the comments down below uh, and I'll be sure to respond. The difference between the free version uh, is that with the free version, you get a maximum of 2000 page views, I think, um, which is plenty, by the way, if you're working on a smaller project or website, 2000 page views is just enough. Um, otherwise, uh, when you go with a paid account, it's just going to give you more of what this, the basic feature already has. It's just going to give you more of it, basically. Um, anyway, it's such a powerful tool and I hope you try it and let us know what you think as well. All right. And uh, for now, hope you enjoy this video. Please do share it and subscribe and give us a like. Tell us how we're doing. All right, guys, I'll speak to you later.